Twitch, let's see, because I've noticed on the VODs on the YouTube channel that actually it misses the first few seconds. So um, I'm just going to keep an eye on that. Anyway, yes, welcome, good evening. It is episode four of The Code Zone. I've probably forgotten to do something already, which is important, such as setting up the stream or getting the, uh, dis the titles right or something like that. Anyway, who knows, who cares, really? It's just a bit of fun. So uh, hello to, oh, we've got Danicron, we've got Saladin, Charnel Mouse, uh, Akatrans, so it's that one again, uh, Standard Int, uh, Magetsub, yep, yeah, good, good, good. Everything seems fine, that's what I want to hear. Perfect. Good. Well, um, well, what have we got to say? You may notice, actually, I sound a little different uh, this evening, and that's, uh, that's an important thing because I've not yet got my audio set up fully installed. So if you recall last week, I uh, said I was going to get some renovations done to my, my building. And uh, they've happened, but as it's been very uh, been very disruptive to my usual uh, evenings activities. And so um, I'm currently, this is the mic raw, so this is actually what I, I tend to actually sound like, I think. It's a bit tinny, the mic. It doesn't really have a very good bass response, uh, but I'm just feeding it directly into the sound card for tonight because I've not got my mixing desk or my synths and all that sort of thing set up yet, so... Uh, who else? We've got Slice. Hello, Slice. Nanowick. Ah, Nanowick's been following along quite uh, quite closely. That's good. Uh, tonight we're going to be looking at drawing the planets. That's what the title says, at least, and we're going to have a go. Uh, because so far we've just been representing them with circles, and I think it's it's time to actually start thinking about how do we render the planets. And also there's a downside to using circles, and we started to discover it last week. Uh, so if I just run what we... because this is where we left off, so I'm just going to click play. Uh, and the downside was, whether you can see these on the stream or not, currently the frame rate is about 450 frames per second, and if I zoom out, uh, it goes to about 500 frames per second. But as I start to zoom in... Oh dear, right now we're down to 2 frames per second, 1 frame per second on that zoom there. And that's because we don't have a clever way of drawing the circles. Uh, so it draws the whole circle all the time. Uh, so even when we're zoomed in to these really close distances, it's drawing this enormous circle, which is billions of pixels in circumference. And uh, I'm, oh, do you know what? I've just, I'm just too tired today to work out the arc mathematics clipping with the rectangles. So what we're going to do is not draw the circles. We're going to draw decals instead that represent the planets. And I'm just about to sneeze. And it always happens when I, when I start streaming, doesn't it? When the sneezes is going to start coming. Uh, Phil Circle's probably going to be, <laughs> be far worse. Uh, five minute stream in and out. <laughs> uh, who have we got? Oh, it's Alex. Yes, hi Alex. Uh, so that's where we're up to. That's where we were left off at the end of the uh, last episode. And there's a few things that uh, we'll talk throughout the, uh, the evening, for, uh, the next hour. Maybe some ideas that we want to start kicking around, what we're doing with this, this show and, and how we should take it forwards. Uh, so the first thing I wanted to sort of do is not do some coding. What have we got? Oh, we've got pings and bips and bloops and all sorts. So uh, thank you for the uh, follows there. So that's uh, uh, Radzio, uh, Nebulous39, Xanor. There we are. See, I'm psychic on that one. Uh, right, we also... Oh, so there's one thing to mention, because... Right, okay, this is what happens when you become the most mediocre Z-list internet celebrity um, of all time. Uh, you, you end up with people that are desperate to get your attention. And after the show last week, there was one person that was pretty desperate to get my attention. In fact, if there was a mechanism of communications open to the guy, uh, he discovered it and sent me a message. And the message was that I had a bug. And I did indeed have a bug. So the message was valid, but needing to repeat it over and over uh, was a little bit frustrating. And you may have noticed you didn't get any responses. So that's how not to get a response from me is to pester me with lots of messages. Anyway, uh, the bug was this. And it's, it's, it's quite a subtle one, but it's quite an important one. That the mass of the planet uh, is incorrect. Uh, and it's incorrect because here we calculate the principal mass as being, um, in this case, it's, it's directly related to the volume. Let me zoom in a little bit there so we can see what's going on. This is the volume of the sphere. But then the first thing we go and do is, if, if we have a principle, we go and get the principle's mass. Um, but that's uh, the mass is set, well, to 1, basically. Because, look, we return uh, F mass here. So, the, indeed, correctly, there is a bug. 
Uh, why not use transformed view? I do use the transformed view. It just doesn't do any clipping. It's not clever enough. Uh, Hermes, hello. Uh, Plush Amazon, hello. Squirrel, hello. Whoa, a little bit snotty tonight. Alex, if you're going to do weeb stuff, I'm going to kick you out. <laughs> hello, Jacob. <laughs> so, yes, the, the problem here was this should really be setting the mass of our actual planet. So this should be, I think, we just solved this by simply setting this to be our mass. Now, this will have a knock-on effect because... Uh, now everything's sort of being calculated properly, so it may upset some of our scaling values, or it might not. We'll just have to see what happens. Well, let's, let's run through it in our heads first. So we're setting the mass of this particular celestial body based on the volume. That seems correct. If it has a principle, the thing it's orbiting around, we're going to go and get its mass, which will have been calculated based upon, well, its, its, uh, its radius. And the speed, the, uh, the angular velocity of this particular uh, satellite orbiting around the principle, uh, well, we're going to have to see what we're going to do with these scaling factors. So, uh, B Viper, hello. I thought you already implemented clipping in the transform view. I did, but not for plain old circle drawing, which was... Uh, a bit of an oversight. Maybe that's something to actually look at. Do you know, I was thinking about how to do the clipping routine, and I think it's actually easier than it looks, and that's because of the way the circle algorithm works. I, I can actually do it on a scanline level and, and just sort of do an early rejection of scanlines, which can't possibly be seen. The, the downside is I think I've got to check those scanlines because I need to calculate the x-coordinate as it's going round, to know where it is. So, then, yeah, maybe it's not as simple as I, I thought it was. <laughs> Hang on a second, watching a Taco Bell commercial. Well, I apologise for the commercials. I have no uh, say over commercials on Twitch. And I should also point out that because I have no say in them, I also get no revenue from uh, commercials on Twitch. So it's a little bit cheeky that they slap a commercial on my stuff. Um, I, I don't know if there's an option to... Uh, specify I do not want monetization I just think it's it's on Twitch it's Amazon you're gonna to have to pay uh, so let's just run this so that's probably now really sort of upset our simulation well, it might, might, oh it's also upset our compilation yes because we've not now got a principal mass um, which we're using in this calculation here so I do actually want to declare this uh, but I'm going to default it to zero. So if we don't have a principle, and the only thing in our system that's not going to have uh, a principle is... Oh, we're doing everything in floats, aren't we? We're not doing things in doubles, floats. Uh, the only thing that's not going to have a principle is the sun, the solar system, and that's why we make a check for it here. So if that's set to null pointer, uh, then it will give the value zero. So the sun itself won't have an angular velocity. We might want it to have a rotational velocity later on. Hang on, it went ping again. So a few more follows. So uh, 402 we 60 kio 8 w Good. Uh, thank you. And golden 1653. Uh, let's search. Uh, so oh, quite a few bits of things. I have no ads and I'm not using ad block. Well, that's, that's good for you. Uh, Amazon, do it to get you a buy a sub. Uh, yeah, it's almost English, that nanoing. Well done. Um, the ads pop up randomly. Hi, what is the end goal of this service? Creating a universe. Now, the end goal, I think, is going to be creating a solar system, not a full universe. Uh, Desp4, hello. Uh, what's up? Are you doing astronomy? Well, we're faking astronomy, I'm afraid. Uh, BSE boy, hello. V me, ahoy. All. Yes, good. What is the plan for today? Well, Ericsson, today is going to be a little bit more graphical, I think. We'll see how far we get, but it's not going to be too much more math involved. We've just fixed a bug. And, you know, I, I was complaining about the, the guy who's messaging to send me all of this information. Uh, and I will I will name check him. Uh, the, the fellow was called Charlie Whiskey. It was through the, the Discord server. Um, and do you know what? What he's complained about isn't wrong. I just... I was a little bit peeved, I must say, when my phone in the middle of the night kept going ping, 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 ping. So, uh, let's uh, see if that has fixed something, or has that made everything worse? Knowing our luck, it may... Oh, wow, yes, look at that. That's much better. It's a far more exciting universe when it's happening at these sorts of speeds. So that's going to have completely upset all of our uh, mathematics. And we've got this big, massive scaling coefficient in here. So I'm going to take that out. 
or at least slow it down by a factor of a thousand. So now things will be very slow. There we go. And we might also implement a following mode. We will see. I don't know yet. Hang on, I've got a few more pings. And I'm determined to sort of read out. If you're making the effort to sort of follow and do all that sort of stuff, I'm, I'm trying to read them out. So um, we've got some hex there. I can't translate the hex immediately into decimal. Uh, but thank you very much for that grouping of hex. Uh, Oski Dan, thank you for the follow. And uh, well, I thought that said syphilis then. But I thought, no, it's probably not going to be that. Uh, Syphy. By the way, the planets don't move in circles. Ellipsoid shape is more accurate. Well, yes. Really? Do you think? Uh, but it really doesn't make much of a difference uh, for what the end goal is here. And the fact is, the end goal is that our planets are going to be huge. You're not, never going to see them from the perspective of doing sort of massive orbits like this. Although I know that uh, there has actually been a few people on the Discord server have done, as a result of this series, a far more accurate uh, simulations of the solar system and they've posted them in the show your stuff channel on the discord we need some way of sort of tagging things that are interesting and related to this series perhaps so we can find them week on week uh, do you know what that, that brings me on to something i think we should do we should uh, create a list of stuff that we want to do with the show uh, so i'm going to create a file actually i'm going to add a file to the project a new item uh, and we will add uh, do you know what? We will add a header file, and we will call the header file uh, stuff to do dot h. And this will really anger the purists. We will leave hash pragma once in, uh, and we will open some comments. And in here, we will keep our stuff to do. So stuff to do. One of the things is uh, what I've just said is we need to somehow tag um, show your stuff. Uh, which with with interesting things. So when people are posting stuff related to this, and that way maybe in the next episode I can bring it up and, and show people uh, what what it is. So we'll find so maybe I'll create a separate chat which is just dedicated to the code zone. Don't know. What are your thoughts? I mean, it's what I want people to sort of uh, get involved in. Uh, hey, Javid Exine, really appreciate the YouTube vids. You're teaching me a lot. Well, thank you very much. I mean, I, I like feedback, and that's positive feedback. So thank you very much. I'm glad you're finding stuff useful. Uh, it's all meant to be a bit silly and a bit fun, but if you find it useful, it's a bonus, I suppose. Uh, it's really cool. It makes me want to program solar systems too. Well, Luby, nothing is stopping you programming solar systems. That reminds me, I did say last week I was going to possibly look at a GitHub repo for this stuff as well. Uh, GitHub repo for this stuff. So is that something we still want? Yeah. Uh, maybe we've got to look at maybe that one is possibly a dedicated Discord chat. Because I think it would be pretty cool that week on week we can go through that and then and sort of see what other people have been doing around this topic. Because the people are doing things. It just it gets lost on the on the Discord server. Hash pragma not even once. I guess if I guess if people use a hash brown, it'll make it easy to <laughs> to search. Well, I don't know. Hash browns will just make me want to go out and get a breakfast. Uh, so I'm going to create this list, and as we come up with ideas, ah, so some other ideas I did actually want to add. Do we want some sort of intro title thing? Is that a popular thing? Uh, intro title. Uh, do we want uh, silly noises and? Graphics, oh, come on, silly noises and graphics for you know, bugs and fails and that sort of thing. Bugs, fails, these are all ideas that have come up in the previous episodes. Uh, Shamil Ab Abism, yeah, Abism, uh, yeah, hello. Uh, so if, if, if I read the names out incorrectly, it's because the text is very, very small on my, uh, my side monitor. Uh, whoosh on the Cobra Kai reference. Uh, do you know, I actually did watch all of the rest of the series. I know I said I would. It, it was okay. It's okay. <laughs> if Morris was here, he'd appreciate it. So, uh, it, you know, shout out in the chats. You can see the chats are recorded on the screen, and Twitch also records them too. And I do go and watch this uh, back later in the week, and I do read sort of everything. So if I miss stuff live, then I do actually go and catch up. So if you've got ideas that you think we should throw into this, um, then I, you know, I'm all up for them. Uh, one of the things I would like to do is perhaps have a guest speaker. 
at some point where somebody can join me in one of the chats and we can discuss something whilst I'm coding this. Because there's going to be bits of this where it's going to be pretty boring. I've just got to do the work. And having some additional content, some other people speaking, talking about their projects might just make things move a little bit quicker. Speak of the devil, and he appears. <laughs> oh, hey, TGD. Uh, relaxing and enjoying the stream with my mum. Well, that's good, because it was Mother's Day in the UK. I don't know about the rest of the world, but certainly on uh, Sunday it was Mother's Day. Right, so where, where are we up to? We wanted to draw the planets, and well, we've still noticed we're, things were still very fast, weren't they? So let's just uh, slow that down a little bit. Did we still have a big daft constant thrown in somewhere else? I think we might have done. We have the, oh, yeah, so everything's too fast for me to follow now. But we've got orbiting. Orbiting's still working. That's good. I'm not too concerned about the speed and the relationships of things, because I can easily slow those up uh, if necessary. But what we want to try and do now is move away from drawing these basic graphics and draw something a bit more sophisticated. And it may pop into your heads that what we can do is fill circles. Somebody shouted it out before. I think it was uh, Danderstein. But the <laughs> we need to implement the follow planet now. Okay. Do you know what? Well, why not? Why not? Um, planet chase cam. Well, that seems to be what the uh, the chat is suggesting we should have a think about doing. Okay, so let's uh, let's have a go at that then. Uh, maybe you're right. I probably have to catch the planet somehow. Now, part of the problem is rather disgustingly, I don't have anything that uh, stores all of my planets just yet. So there's uh, going to be some really grotesque hacks. So maybe we also want to look at that. So I was planning on drawing the planets, but it looks like we're, we're going a little bit more sort of cody. Uh, what have we got here? We've got quite a few people following. So, uh, Monsieur Badia, thank you very much. Uh, Lexus, Pure of Pure, KG Will555, Sutter Baruso, Honey Mice, and <laughs> Doskia. <laughs> people think I'm nuts. Uh, right, so... Uh, where was I up to? I was going to put in some sort of camera, so some sort of following camera. Okay, let's have a think about that for a second. Uh, because, is it actually a useful thing to have? Yes, it is a useful thing to have. So, we want in our main game, where's our main game class? So, let's put in uh, a pointer to the planet uh, that is currently selected. Now, there's been some debate about why am I using pointers for these things. And the simple answer is, at the time, it seemed really clever, but uh, it's also because I will be sort of going down the route of polymorphism for different planetary objects as it gets a bit more sophisticated. So I'm just sort of laying some groundwork for that. We can refactor things later on. Uh, so I'm going to type that very poorly. I'm going to type MP selected, which is going to be a pointer to a selected planet, and hopefully that's null pointer by default. In fact, you know what? I'm going to be really explicit about it. Null pointer. Oh! Uh, your version of Windows 10 will soon reach the end of service. Restart to install a newer version. Oh, no! What will that bring? Well, go away. I read it. Go on. Ugh. Go away. There we are. Good. Shouldn't P-selected be non-owning? Well, the, the risk is... Uh, if I end up, I mean, I could go down the route of weak pointers, but if, if I ended up uh, sort of pointing to a planet that stopped existing, um, which I guess will never happen, yeah, I, do you know what? Yeah, okay, why not? Why not? Let's uh, let's do it that way, and we can worry about it later on. I'm, I'm really not too fussed about sort of performance for things here. Uh, and we'll default that to begin with as being the sun. Uh, so let's say uh, MP selected uh, equals the uh, MP sun, and because we're doing it this way, we'll have get. And so we're setting our selected value to be one of the planets. So now we want to offset our camera view, which I have to remember how to do now with the transform view, because uh, it's not immediately uh, obvious how you do that.
So just catching up with the chats. There's been quite a few. Yes, there's going to be some oop. I'm sorry about that. Uh, the pointers are great in games until you add networking. Well, okay. <laughs> sorry, but I can't follow this stream. Oh, well, Luby, it's okay. You just take part. It's just all silliness. Don't, don't worry if you can't uh, what, uh, follow along. What does the M stand for in Hungarian notation? Member, 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 member. Member. Uh, we are like the planets, and this stream is the sun. <laughs> God. Uh, what did I have for food? I had cottage pie, and it was a bit grim, to be honest. Uh, right. So, I've got some planets here. Wait, what do I want to do? I want to, before I draw things, I need to set sort of the offset in my uh, world. Now, I have to remember how to do that. Now, people think that I come up with a bit of code and sort of the, the week I make the video. The truth is, I did transform view around about Christmas time. Uh, and it's, it takes that long before I start to remember how I used it. Uh, so where did I actually do this? I just, was it just a set world offset? I think it was just set world offset. So if I set the world offset to B... Yeah, it wasn't that... It wasn't as simple as just setting world offset because... Uh, if I set the world offset, it's going to put it in the top left hand corner of the screen so let's have a look at that anyway so uh, set a uh, world offset well, I've lost it now set world offset uh, and I'm going to specify that that goes to our MP selected and we'll do a check for if it's null pointer uh, and the, we want to set that to be the get Cartesian uh, value. Perfect. So we'll just put a check in to make sure that, that isn't none. Uh, none. Null. And I'll just say to all the people that have turned up, uh, yes, I'm sounding a little bit different tonight just because I've not fully set up my uh, audio system after all of the messing about with builders and having new windows installed and things. And not the windows that's just popped up either. Right. So uh, that should select the sun, and I'm hoping maybe that's going to stick it somewhere in the top left. Yep, see, there it is. And now I can't pan and zoom. Well, I can zoom, but I can't pan uh, because it's now selected the sun. Uh, if I choose a different planet to start with, so if I choose the Earth... What we can see is it is the Earth and its satellites but of course it's now still locked up into the, the top left of the screen. So I kind of want that to be in the middle of the screen, I think. Uh, so I do need to do some sort of offsetting. I can't remember how to do this. Uh, the offset is get Cartesian. And I think I want to take the screen width and convert that to world space. Okay, so if I... Uh, let's have a think about that for a second. So if I have I don't have screen width as a way of getting a vector uh, straight up. I will see VF2D be screen size uh, equals uh, float screen width and float screen height. I put in too many brackets here, or not enough brackets. Huh? Oh, extra dots. I was lacking the dots. See, I, I think it would be fun if we had something when I, when I make an obvious mistake like that, that it flashes up on the screen because you guys are all spamming the chat with something. Uh, right, so now we've got the screen size. What I want to do is scale... Uh, to world, and I think I pass in that. Yes, in fact, I don't want that as a float, I want that as regular bog standard integer. Uh, scale to world, v screen size divided by two is what I want to say. Gives me the midpoint. Oh. So uncertainty, thank you very much for the subscription. Yes, uh, that's uh, that noise there that we all heard. Hopefully it wasn't too loud this time. Uh, is a Twitch subscription. Thank you very much. 
you wouldn't have this issue if PG could just. <laughs> Tar- Tarry is a bit of a celebrity on the Discord server because he has his name checked in the Pixel Game Engine file, and we shall go and have a look why. Because he loves pointing it out to people. This is this is his sort of crowning achievement in life. This is his most proud thing. Uh, and we'll have to try and find it. Where is it? Where is it? Because there's so many different notes now in here. You know what? Tarry. There we go. Get the mouse as a vector to keep Tarry happy. There we go. See? Celebrity. And that, that's true of anybody. That Anybody that has a successful contribution to the Pixel Game Engine, uh, you do actually get included and you, you get a little note in there. Uh, lots of people do contribute. I don't accept PRs necessarily, but uh, do chat on the Discord with ideas and typically proof. So it's all very well going, oh, I have this great idea. Wouldn't it be great if we had a function? Well, if it's that great, implement it, submit it. Uh, right, so where were we up to anyway? Main game. So we've now just tried some experimental uh, screen sizing uh, shenanigans here. So we'll see if that is actually going to work. Uh, so the idea is I take the half size of my current screen value and I scale that to the current world and set it. Now I can't remember if I have to uh, uh, add it or subtract it. We'll find out I guess now. Oh dear, got some build errors. Why have we got some build errors? Because, uh, yes, I don't actually need those at all. I was getting getting too, too ahead of myself. I'm so used now to the latest uh, Visual C compiler just moaning all the time about casting. It's like that's that's all they've done. They've not added any new functionality. It just moans more. Uh, it's not, not a trend I'm very happy about. Right, let's have a look. Right, so I'm guessing, given that I can't see anything at all, that that is actually going the wrong way around. Or oh, the values are just daft and nothing works at all. In which case I'm going to move on and we'll draw the planets and worry about selecting them later. But there we go. Right, so the Earth is centralised on our screen. I can zoom and watch what's going on. So now I need a way to select the planets. Uh, do you look at the keys when you type? Yes, I do. I can't touch type. Uh, thinking ahead a bit, but did I remember you were planning to add trading in an economy? Yes, I'd like to turn this into a little bit of a, an elite homage, is the best way, not a fromage. Um, although, hmm, who knows. Now the sun orbits the Earth, just as it should be. <laughs> yeah, that's the downside, I suppose, if you look at it relative to one of the bodies. <laughs> Uh, so we can just test the theory. Let's go and have a look. Let's latch onto the satellite and make sure that we've got that right. So this is sort of the most active thing uh, in the game, uh, and we can we can select that as an object and follow it. So that's the satellite, but of course everything is relative to the satellite now. So we can even, barely even perceive that the satellite exists. At these sort of scales. So for now I'm going to leave it sort of locked on that way. We'll, we'll focus it on Earth because that's the interesting one to start with. And uh, we'll, we'll look at sort of filling in those graphics. I, I'll add mouse selection and things some other time. I wanted to do specifically in this in this particular episode, I wanted to draw some planets. How are we all getting on? Have I missed too many chats? Did you just say elite cheese? Yes. <laughs> you get motion sickness from watching it. Yeah, you want to stand in front of this massive screen sort of looking at it all the time. Uh, for simple planet selector, could just press tab to cycle between them. Hey, that's not a bad idea. See, if people keep suggesting things, we'll never get sort of do the things I want to do. Uh, my original plan was to do some sort of just clever mouse uh, coordinate check, uh, but that would require. Well, maybe I'd still do that actually. The only problem is then sort of navigating the universe becomes a little bit tricky. And all these things will be mute points anyway, because it's fun whilst we're developing it, but ultimately you'll be flying a little spaceship around the universe. But we may need things like map screens and that sort of thing. Who knows? Oh, sorry, I just bumped my beard into the microphone. You've got some free Javid X9 ASMR right there and then. Uh, right. So... 
<laughs> Will this be on YouTube? Yes, it goes on to the... Uh, oh, thank you, Alex. Yes, it goes on to the, uh, the extra channel. And I'm creating a playlist of all of these. So these are, these are not meant to be like the normal YouTube videos. These are far more uh, controversial. Let's say controversial. Why not? Right, so drawing a planet. And I'm going to cheat. I'm going to hack. All right, because I use a tool, and I'm, it's a tool I enjoy, and I'm not selling it, but it's a good tool, uh, and it's, it's sort of a Photoshop equivalent, which I enjoy, uh, and I'm going to use this to create some basic planets. In fact, I already have done, uh, because I don't think doing this live on stream whilst I'm discovering all of the functions would be particularly interesting. Uh, but what you can see here is I have a transparent texture, uh, quite a large one. It's 2,048 pixels by 2,048 pixels. Uh, of a circle uh, in a transparent background. Oh. Are you making an orrery? It's not far off an orrery, uh, would be the, the simplest way. We're ultimately, at the moment, yes, okay, at the moment it's an orrery, uh, but a really crude one. Affinity photo worth every 27 euros. <laughs> uh, Thank you, thank you very much, uh, K0 underscore underscore. <laughs> uh, so what I do with this, uh, because we have in the Pixel Game Engine this power to draw decals, we can draw uh, like quite a lot of different layers of decal on top of each other. And we can use uh, interesting blending functions between these layers to generate interesting effects. And the nice thing about space is there's nothing in it, so we don't actually have to draw very much stuff. And another advantage, right now, as I pointed out at the start, when we're drawing the circles, there's billions of pixels that we don't see, and that's why the frame rate tanks. But decals, very conveniently, by the graphics card, are clipped. So we can just draw the entire universe. We don't have to worry about clipping it ourselves. At least not now. We might do later on. Uh, so moving to a decal circle like this makes a lot of sense uh, because we don't have to then calculate the circle and draw it in real time. We don't have to do any sort of per pixel clipping. We just waz the circle at the graphics card and say, here yeah, bud, sort that out for me, make it look pretty. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, and I'm going to do that with several different decals, all based upon this circle. Uh, the graphic card will clip. Yes, it will do. Uh, it will clip uh, not necessarily the 3D geometry, of which there's very little in the Pixel Game Engine, uh, but it will certainly clip the pixels and the drawing. So. Uh, this is called a Finity Photo. It's a com by a company called Serif. They have a whole suite of photo designers, which is the Illustrator equivalent. They've got a publisher equivalent. And and they're all compatible, but they're also great for programmers uh, because they don't shy away from letting you do the nitty gritty dirty stuff. So from this circle, I create a, a masking layer and I can procedurally texturize that circle. And this is classic Perlin noise. And if I double click on the procedural texture, uh, it will actually, you can enter code, right? right now, that's pretty cool. Uh, and it's got a load of built-in functions uh, to generate imagery and it's got loads of presets as well and all I've done here is taken the preset and you can create your own little scripts like this and it will generate the noise and you can add sliders and see what different noise things look like uh, so um, you know it, it's I think that's pretty neat particularly for uh, sort of us, us programmer artists which are not very good at, at art at all uh, so that's the first thing I would do use one of its generators to generate this texture <laughs> Please enter code. Smells like a bad idea. Uh, yeah, I don't like subscriptions either, and uh, that's I, I and I used to use Photoshop, but it's uh, it's just prohibitively expensive for us uh, us lone coders sat at home. It's it's too much, uh, and and this uh, it's it's a good enough tool for all the things that I need it to do, and the price is about right. Uh, so that, that's all I'm going to say on the matter, because I'm not some sort of affinity shill, uh, but it is the tool I use, and people do ask what is it that I use. Uh, so once I've got this generated texture, I then uh, replaced some of the colours. And so I created sort of this uh, artificial palette here. We can have a look. That was the palette that I used. Very simply, I've got land, I've got beaches, and I've got sea, ocean, that sort of thing. Um, naturally, of course, we could texture that differently. And this is making an, a, an assumption that the height map 
well, that the Perlin noise is some sort of height map. So it gives us this nice kind of uh, sort of planetary texture to it. Now, the, the problem is, though, it, it looks a bit strange, and that's because we're expecting it to look like a sphere. Uh, and of course it isn't. Right now it's just this 2D planar image that's been clipped to this boundary of a circle. Uh, well, the nice thing again is, is uh, with all of these art packages, you can now get sort of 3D modifiers. And uh, 3D modifiers, the one I'm going to use is, is the Spherize modifier, which basically distorts the texture from the inside. Uh, so we can actually have a look at that. I can, I can show you it doing the distort. So it just does, it tries to grow a sphere from the inside of the texture outwards. Like that. And, and that helps a lot. Now it's probably going to uh, I'll have to press some Control Z there to get that back right. So I set the radius of my Spherize modifier to sort of match the overall diameter of the planet. And that looks a lot better now, right? So if we're looking top down on the planet, we might want to have some sort of ice cap or something at the top. We can worry about that later. So I'm just going to have a slurp of water and catch up with the chats because I noticed that they were whizzing past. And I wish to thank all of the viewers that have turned up. We've uh, got quite a few tonight. Uh, what have we got here? So, reminds me of old TBS map colours. Uh, that's a really cool effect. Yeah, the sphere the sphere effect is very good. Well, you know, pixel game engine, things should look a little bit pixely. Right, we've got a whole bunch of follows have happened uh, since I started reading them out. Uh, and I possibly, have we have I missed a, missed a subscription there as well? Maybe. Anyway, if I have missed it, I apologise, but it was from uncertainty. I can't remember if I read it out. Uh, I'm, I'm, to those that are new to the channel, I'm fairly new to Twitch and doing Twitch stuff like this. So I'm still working it all out. What about wormholes for fast transport? Yeah, okay. <laughs> First time seeing Code Zone, decided to give it a chance. Well, you know, <laughs> it's not nowhere near as polished. Well, I say polished as the YouTube channel, but we do have a lot more sort of community engagement going on. I enjoy sort of the chats and things like that. And yes, you don't need to use this art package to do these things. There's there's lots of art packages that can do them, including some free ones as well. Uh, but the nice thing is this is huge, right, this texture. And so when we zoom into it later on, uh, we'll get a lot of interesting detail. I'm also going to do something else, and, and that's going. I'm going to cheat in the Pixel Game Engine. And I'm hoping in a few weeks that I'll be showing an extension which will allow us to do this all very differently. And potentially, and I'm not committing to it, but potentially I think I've got an algorithm which will allow us to just sort of perpetually zoom all the way down to seeing waves and things in the water. Uh, so you know, yeah, watch this space. Maybe that's something I'll be working on sort of in my spare time. But uh, So the last uh, step I'm going to add to this is, is some sort of lighting. Uh, because this is meant to be in space, of course, the main source of light will be from the center of our solar system. It'll be this, this principle. And so I've created a basic sort of texture here. Um, that one looks awful, actually. Is it that one? I don't think it is that one. Let me open up these masks. I think I've got to put the background on for us to see some of these things. Right, oh yes, okay, I was missing a few layers. Uh, so this one adds a, a sort of an atmosphere. So we can see around here, uh, it's sort of a glowy kind of atmosphere. Uh, and I'm also mixing that and combining that with uh, a shadowy sort of texture. And what I can do with these layers, because one of the functions I've got is, is to draw decals rotated, I can sort of emulate the sunlight hitting the Earth very, very simply. All I need to do is rotate that particular de uh, decal. I've not got this sort of texture yet for city side lighting and, and stuff happening at night, and there's no specular reflections or anything like that, but it's, you know, it's keeping, keeping it fairly simple for now. Uh, the other thing that you might want to add to this is a, a sky layer, which again is just the pearly noise generator, this time with transparency and white, and we can draw that as a layer of clouds. So once we've got all of these layers, I can then sort of export them uh, as sort of high definition bitmaps or PNG files in this instance, and we can start to load them into the Pixel Game Engine. So I think that's where we're up to, loading them into our app. Let's have a look at that then. Uh, space Thing, that's what we called ourselves, didn't we? Neat, do you have a cloud layer? Yes. 
the that's a different layer is or the planet is tie locked don't fully understand the question there um but we'll see once once we get things up and running let's, let's see what we think of it uh, so now I want to load up these graphics, and for now I'm just going to load them directly into Celestial Body. Uh, this is a really bad way of doing this, because it's going to load the same graphics over and over again. Because the Celestial Bodies are going to be responsible for drawing themselves. In fact, you know, should, should we start making an effort to do this sort of kind of right, and say that we're going to have a planet class that inherits... Yeah, okay, I think that's what I'm going to do. I want to avoid sort of stuff that we're just because later on I'm only coding this on stream I don't want to have to do lots of really boring code on stream uh, so let's add a new class a uh, new class there we go and we'll call this one a planet and it's very possible that now we know what the operations are that we've seen in the photo uh, editing program that we could emulate those in code and do all of this procedurally generated but that's a uh, that's for some other time, I think. And I'm going to inherit from Celestial Body. Now, I don't know why I even bother typing this in here, because as soon as I go in, the first thing I do is reformat all of the code that it's created. I don't like the fact that it sticks those on different lines. That's just terrible. Right, stop it. Stop it. There we go. And uh, right, so that's going to inherit from Celestial Body. What have we got in Celestial Body that we need to uh, implement? Well, we've got Draw Self and Update Self. Uh, update self, I think I'm just going to leave, but draw self, that's quite important. Now, everything else can stay the same as it is. So let's pull that in uh, into our planet header file. There we go. Let's create a constructor, because we might use the constructor to pass in a link to some of the renderables, which, uh, um, which represent the graphics. So we'll... Do you know what? Yes, let's do that. Uh, so we'll pass in the type, I will see, renderable. Uh, and we'll pass that in as just simply that. I'm not going to do everything in one file like I normally would. And the method I'm overriding is that draw self. Okay, so let's go and was those in the implementation file. Planet.cpp, where are you? There we go. Uh, so I'm also going to store, so I'm still passing that by reference, is that what I want to do? Uh, maybe, unsure, unsure, we may have to play around with this a little bit. You know what, no, I'm going to simplify this so we can actually get something sort of achieved in this video for now. I'm going to keep that as a default constructor. And it's going to be in the constructor that I'm going to load these things. Uh, so let's actually do it that way. Right, so what am I going to need? Well, I know that I've got my basic uh, layer of planet. Uh, so these are private. We'll see, renderable. Uh, we'll have, I've, I call, I prefix uh, these with uh, GXF, GFX. And we'll have one which is planet. And we'll have one which is clouds. And one which is uh, sort of lighting. Like that. Now, a renderable, if you've not seen these, because you don't see me use them very often on the YouTube channel, they combine a sprite and a decal and handle sort of all that manipulation for you. Sorry if I keep rubbing my nose. A little bit of a cold. I was out uh, for a little, went for a quick run before and it was a disaster. It was a bit too cold. Ah, we've seen, got a debate going on about a uh, Hungarian notation. Why do you write public for two times? Oh, I think I've answered this before. Uh, for me, it's a mental separation. That one's going to contain all my constructors. This one will contain methods. And uh, this one will contain... Private. It's just a, I'm, I'm a very visual programmer, so if my code looks right, it tends to be right. And for me, it's sort of that separation really helps me read the code quickly. Because it's not that easy coding live, something you've not done before, and chatting to an audience, you'd, you'd want to leave all of these sort of uh, segregation points and, and things to, to latch onto so you know where you're up to. Because you get distracted by questions like this, but then you've got to get back into it. Uh, so we're going to load uh, from our graphics, we're going to load those in 
our constructor. Is that the best thing to do? Yes. Why not? We'll do that in our constructor. And the graphics are, where are they? There we go. Uh, have I copied those over? I think I copied those over. Yes, I've copied those over to my current project directory. So these were the graphics uh, exported from uh, the software and a few others as well. Uh, we'll look at probably those next week. Uh, and I, I wanted to experiment with some lighting. Now, when I did this first time around, sort of my little prototype just before Christmas, uh, I wanted to try and do sort of city lighting and that sort of thing, and it was a disaster. So we're not going to be doing that today. Uh, but I do need the names of the files. So let's load these up. Uh, I'm just going to put this on another screen so I don't lose it uh, whilst I'm typing these out. Now, the nice thing about renderables is they're very easy to load. Uh, but they have to be loaded after the Pixel Game Engine has started. So that's why I was a bit hesitant about sticking these things in the constructor for Planet. But it's okay because we do like a deferred uh, constructions for, for the planets anyway. Uh, so what did we call this first one was Planet dot load. Easy enough. And the folder is dot uh, slash assets slash make sure I get this right. It's just assets in this case. And this one is going to be Planet Surface png and we'll also have uh, planet uh, what did we say it was planet clouds I've already already lost what I'm doing uh, yes clouds was right and we'll call that one what did I call the file uh, planet sky was that the right one let's have a look planet sky yeah, potentially that looks like it could be clouds. So planet surface was this one, planet sky, planet shadow, I don't think we're going to be using, but planet atmosphere and shadow, that one combined, uh, we will be using, I think. So they're the ones that I want. Uh, so this one is planet, uh, what did we, <laughs> planet sky, wasn't that was it? Right, Sky. And this one is going to be Planet Atmosphere Shadow. Let's spell these right as well. Atmosphere Shadow. So there are three. That was lighting, wasn't it? Right, so when it comes to drawing itself, we pass in the transformed view, and currently, our celestial body, does it do any sort of interesting calculations? Yes, because it was drawing sort of the lines and things. Now all of that's kind of going to disappear now because this planet implementation will override this draw self function for our base class. But I'm just thinking I've got to be careful about where I'm doing the offset. So we'll, we'll start off very basically and, and then start to make it a little bit more fancy as we move along. So I'm going to take dv.draw uh, rotated decal. And the place I'm going to pass it into is uh, get Cartesian, which is the Cartesian. I think I've actually got that as a uh, member, haven't I? Or maybe I don't. Maybe I always get the. Uh, the Cartesian value. Yes, okay, so, and it's got a radius, and so what I'm thinking is we're going to have to sort of offset the planet uh, based on its radius. But that's okay, because I know all my planet graphics are 1024, sorry, 2048 by 2048. So here I'm going to, yes, take the position, I'm going to pass in the decal that we need. Now Gorbit's going to shout at me in a minute if he's watching, because uh, I've still not implemented a feature that he wanted. Uh, and I'm not going to right now either. So that's decal. Uh, so we've chosen the right decal. The next thing is to choose an angle. Now our planets aren't going to rotate just yet. We'll, we'll worry about that in a moment. Uh, now the center of the graphic is going to be uh, 1024.0f by 1024.0f. So that's telling me that uh, to offset the top left corner to the middle of the decal. Oh, hang on, I've got a few chats going on here. A mobile PG port would be awesome. Well, we've got this uh, um, web-based one. 
Yes, the shadow can rotate separately, and that's sort of the key thing. Because we can exploit the radial symmetry if we assume our planets are looked at from above in space. <laughs> Rather odd concept, but nonetheless. Uh, so, uh, what have I got here is we've now offset the planet. Our scale is the interesting thing. Because technically I want to sort of scale it to the radius that we've specified for the planets. I can't remember what we said for Earth. Uh, what did you say for Earth? So Earth was a radius of, I think the second argument was radius, wasn't it? So yes, radius of 10. What does that mean? I don't know. Uh, so, but I'm going to just specify mf radius by mf radius. So we'll scale it evenly in both directions. And for now, I'm just going to leave it tinted white. Right, so now we need to load the planet itself. Uh, so let's go back to our main game class. Nobody has yet built me this little utility that I wanted that automatically swips these windows around. Or at least nobody's uh, told me what the key combination is to do it. Uh, and we want to include up here our planet. Plabnet. Maybe that's what, <laughs> maybe, maybe that's what we should call the game. <laughs> Net. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, right. <laughs> so, uh, shared point of celestial body is, is Earth. Uh, when I'm creating the Earth now, that's a sea planet. <laughs> so if I, yeah, I double-click this, it sort of should smartly open them up. Uh, I want it to sort of animate. I want it to go... Like that. Yeah. One day, one day, one day I'll get what I need. Uh, so that is making our planet. I don't know why that's uh, stayed white. Oh no, it's gone green now. It's good. Let's see what kind of disasters lie in store. Now we may notice it might take a little bit longer to load than all. I've forgotten something here, haven't I already? Uh, ooh, 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 ooh. Got a template error. Means we're all just guessing. Uh, it's in memory. It's in memory. Why doesn't it like this? Uh, P Earth equals make sure our oh, planet. Oh, has it got to be? Ugh, they've been smart pointers. They're not that smart, are they? Uh, for now. I think uh, we can do it like this. Or not. Standard make sure it is, uh, this is this is where C starts to fall over, isn't it? What have we got here? Uh, make sure planet, standard third pointer, celestial body, float, float. Oh, hang on. Chat's going nuts. See, it's all very well going at Javid X, and it doesn't ping or anything like that. So I, I have to look at the thing. I don't think you added that constructor. Uh, that is correct. That is the problem. Um, I didn't add that constructor. Uh, so uh, let's just put that back. That should be you. Yeah. Yes, you're right. I just sort of left the constructor all blank and rubbish like that. So let's uh, steal some constructory bits. So I'll steal you. Uh, stick you in here. I don't think we're ever going to have a need for a default constructor, but you're just going to now immediately call. Get rid of these sort of auto bits. It must be chaotic on stream to sort of watch the code sort of zip around all over the place like this. And we'll call the base class so C Celestial Body. And I've already forgotten what these things are called. Principal F distance F radius. P principal uh, F distance F radius. Yeah, I'm terrible at typing, and that might surprise quite a few of you. Um, but typically, I don't look at the screen when I'm coding. I tend to just look at the keyboard. Uh, right, has that made things a little bit better?
looks a bit healthier this time. So uh, what we've just done then, some of you might actually be quite confused by what's just happened. Um, I've created a subtype called Sea Planet of our Celestial Body class. Uh, and I naively just forgot uh, that you have to have, uh, when we're constructing the planets here individually, we're passing in information about how to construct them. And I hadn't passed that information into the planet object. Yeah, we've so you can see the uh, the chat's a little bit behind. Right, so what's going to happen now? Let's click play. Watch it not even load the file. So we knew I said it might take a little bit of time to start up, and the reason being is we can see here it's sort of loading the graphics, and we'll address that as a, a point to worry about later on. But it's loaded in our planet graphic. The trouble is, I think our planet graphic has completely consumed the entire universe. That's probably not unsurprising because it's thousands of pixels wide. Uh, so I think when we go to the scaling factor that we had before, let me try and find the right bit of code. So this is in our, uh, not here, it's in our planet class. We set the offset to 1024. Our radius here assumes everything is kind of normalized to 1. This is what we're using to scale. So I kind of also want to divide by the size of our planet. Is that right? So 248.0 f divided by 248.0 f. So that allows us to sort of scale everything down to 1 and then we're sort of increasing it then by the radius of the object. And there we go. So that looks now a bit more sensible uh, relative to the things that are going on. Good. I like that so far. Once we've got the Earth bit on, let's draw another rotating decal. Let's draw on our let's draw on our lighting because that's uh, sort of the bit where it starts to get pretty. I'm going to keep exactly the same scaling and rotation for the time being. Yeah, I've not set the uh, STB image yet, but certainly we will be doing that, yes. So with the lighting, what we can see is half the planet is in shadow. Now, it doesn't go completely black, because in a game that doesn't look very exciting when things go completely black. But we can see there is an atmosphere. But what I will say is the atmosphere, uh, well, it doesn't look quite right. I think it should be tinted. So we'll tint that decal uh, with a particular shade. Uh, let's pick OLC. Um, want something that's a bit, let's just go and choose a proper colour. Uh, so if we want something that looks a bit planety, that's not actually far off. I wonder if that's loaded something from a previous project. But if we say 69161255, so pixel 69151255, like that. So that's sort of a interesting shade of blue. And we're going to get it to tint our atmosphere and shadow layer with that shade of blue. Another look. And maybe it's a bit too deep, that shade of blue. Well, that's not too bad. And I think we'll also add in then our cloud layer too. Why not, since we're here? Clouds. Uh, everything is exactly the same. The only thing I'm going to change this time, though, is I'm going to tint the clouds with a little bit of alpha. So I want them to be white. Oh, we're not, not with a point naught f. So 255 by 255 by 255. Uh, but I'm going to sort of shade them to half alpha in this case. Now, decals, you don't need to specify any interesting mode. You just use them straight up. Let's take a look. Yeah, there is no OLC orange. There should be an OLC orange. Okay, so our clouds maybe need to be less uh, less alpha -y. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll shove that up just a little bit. I'll shove that to, say, uh, 200. 
Uh, but now there's one more thing I want to try and get get in here. We want the planets and things to sort of rotate. Now we know that the center of our solar system is going to be the sun. So one of the things we can do is rotate our shadow angle to always sort of face the center of the universe. And I'm just going to, because I'm just conscious that we've, we're sort of hitting the end of the show time here, uh, that I just want to make sure that I get the, uh, the math sort of right for this. When it draws itself, because it, 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 it wouldn't be very exciting otherwise. Uh, planet, 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 planet. Okay, it really is. is <laughs> okay, uh, I've, I've, uh, I've left a rude comment in the prototype. I'm not going to uh, not going to reveal that. Um, so, but what we want to do is we we know that the, the the sun is always going to be the center. So we want to work out what the angle is of our planet relative to the center of the solar system, and that's easily done actually for uh, where our planet is because we know that the center of our solar system is zero zero and we can use that to our advantage because when we specify the angle here uh, i can simply specify uh, a tan 2 at which point i need to give the cartesian coordinates of the current planet get cartesian now this isn't very efficient because we know that get cartesian does loads of recursive trickery uh, so we probably want to cache the uh, get cartesian at some point we can pass in y and get Cartesian dot x. There we go. And what that should do is rotate our graphic. Let's have a look. We may need to add in some offsets to uh, you know, make it look sensible relative to the center of the universe. What we can see now as the planet rotates around the sun, where the sun is there, we're going over the top, that our shadowing is somewhat realistic. Right? I think that looks quite nice. Well, there you go, Ericsson. See, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm not looking at the chats enough. But yes, just take the inverse tangent. It's exactly what we've just done. The inverse tangent of the planet's position. And so I think that looks uh, rather nice. So I guess there's one final thing to do, and that's to add some cloud movement, because the cloud shouldn't just be static like that. And that's a little bit trickier, uh, because right now we don't have sort of any accumulation of time. And we don't have sort of any rotational velocity for our planet. So uh, maybe I should leave this uh, for now. Yeah, do you know what? I think I will leave this for next time. So what I'll do now is just quickly remind you all that there's ideas here that need some uh, user input. Uh, and I'll also leave this running as well, why not? Put that on the side. Come on, keep running, keep running. There we go. So that's, I think that looks quite nice. And, and it's the art package which is doing all of the hard work here. And all these uh, follows. Are these all Twitch follows? Yes, well, thank you very much for all of these follows. Uh, one last thing to do, because I said we wanted to also get these things to work in the web browser. Should we just have a quick test compile to make sure that it compiles? Um, is it going to? Maybe. Maybe. The, the only reason I'm hesitant here is because the assets folder uh, also has in sort of all of this junk. So it's quite a few megabytes of graphics going in there. And I've got a feeling that when we launch in Scripton, um, it's going to complain because we saw that in the first episode. It didn't like having a huge amount of data to load. But let's give it a go anyway and see what happens. If I uh, select in script and compile, I'll just let that uh, trickle on in the background. It's gathering some CPP files, it's found some assets. That's good. So the next YouTube video is going to be about how do we do this in Scripton stuff. It's going to be a guide video on getting hold of Inscripton and how to compile Pixel Game Engine stuff with uh, Inscripton to run in the browser. Uh, because I'm hoping to then, sort of in a couple of weeks later, follow that up with a jam specific. That was a community decided thing. We discussed it in the last episode uh, that I think it's, uh, it's pretty useful for uh, to get a little bit of momentum behind people building web apps uh, using the Pixel Game Engine. Uh, so there we are, that's built. It says it's built with success. That's a good thing. Uh, so if I go to Tools and select Run, now is it going to run? Where is it going to run? Okay, so it's uh, opened up in the browser. 
Oh, I can hear myself. Uh, so this is now running in WebGL, and you can see we haven't changed the code at all. I know you're all getting a bit bored of me repeating this, but I think people find it quite interesting that this is now uh, a web-based application. So we can do jams and interesting stuff with it. So we'll, the next video is going to be about how is that done, and how can you convert your Pixel Game Engine applications into uh, WebAssembly-based stuff uh, with a single click. Uh, so next YouTube video will officially launch the inscription support. That's right, Dan Destine, yes it will. Um, uh, Barty Fufkin, have to be careful to say that. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, if I've not uh, seen your chats, don't worry, I do watch this back and I will look at the chat afterwards uh, to see what people have suggested and what people have been talking about. Uh, but for the time being, I think we have run out of time. I think this has been an excellent episode of The Code Zone. In fact, I'm really enjoying doing The Code Zone. And I thank you all for joining in with it. This video will be uploaded to the YouTube. And uh, until then, I wish you all the best. And uh, take care of yourself. I'll see you this time next week. Bye-bye.